Well, we are going to be discussing enhanced styles for this formatting. We have no uh, murdering of horses or uh, death by hugs today, but we will have some other cool stuff. So hopefully everybody will enjoy it. I am David Warner, joined with Hugo Bernier. You guys know us both, but feel free to reach out if you uh, have any questions. All right, so what is enhanced styles and how does it relate to a web part? Well, what is it? So it begins with an SPFX web part, which provides us the opportunity to put CSS styles on a single page uh, to override list formatting definitions that we've created. Now, you may have seen in the past where we've done this via SPFX extensions. Uh, I've done one in the past where I showed how to include icons and animate those icons. Uh, but of course, that was an extension. So it means it's going to be on every page and every site collection where it's loaded, whether or not you use it or, uh, or not. And so a web part only affects the pages where it's added, which is beneficial because it's going to provide better performance. Uh, and it allows you to provide different enhancements to the same list formatting experience on different pages where you might find that needed. Now, what are the rules of use? Because this definitely has some of those towing the line opportunities where you could use it for irresponsibility, right? So you only want to use it where you own the HTML. We own the HTML within our list formatting. So with great power comes great responsibility. We want to be a superhero, not a supervillain. Of course, there's a dependency here. Uh, we want to set up our list formatting definition out of the box to be as robust as we can. So take advantage of everything that is included with list formatting out of the box, things as well as what you saw Chris doing for accessibility and all of the above. Uh, so if you do extra enhancements like you're going to see today, just realize that there's that dependency on your web part and the styles being included on that page. Um, and so obviously it's not attached to the list definition. It is an add-on. So what are the types of opportunities for list formatting? Where do they make the most sense and why would we want to use them? Pseudo classes and elements are two of the items, right? Because you can get hover, you can get visited. There's a number of things that you can tap into with pseudo classes and elements that are not includable on list formatting definitions by default. That includes animations such as keyframes, things like that. So we see a much more friendly version of Parker flying in on his warrior hearse, we can hover over it. We can see an animation occur because of that, right? It's so a warrior horse's charge. So let's see a demo. What does that look like? So here we have a list formatting. This is on a page in the list web part. So it still looks great. This almost looks like, a, and virtually does look like, a custom web part, right? But we can take it a little bit further. So the first thing we want to do is edit our page and we'll go load the web part. So it is called Enhanced List Formatting. Uh, it should hopefully be in the repo soon. We've got a PR ready for it. Uh, so feel free to look for that soon. You click on it. And of course, there's some warnings here, right? Much like we get on our GPS, we don't want to be interacting with the GPS while we're driving. There are some rules of engagement. So if you misuse this web part, there's lots of side effects that you do not want to have to live with. Broken styles, potentially. Uh, if you use them in incorrectly, trying to override SharePoint, where we don't own the HTML, users will call and ask you why SharePoint is broken. You'll have tears, nightmares, blue screens of death. Nobody wants that. So we want to go ahead and make sure that we use it responsibly. So when we accept that, we can add our custom styles. Now, Hugo wanted to make a note about this feature here. Uh, yeah, so this is a, a custom property control that I, that I built that uses the Monaco editor. I actually uh, largely uh, borrowed from uh, Chris Kent's uh, solution for in including the Monaco editor. I mean, as a general rule, anytime you can borrow uh, from Chris Kent's, you know, do do what he does, you should do that in real life. Uh, but uh, this this actually is something that we've designed so we could reuse it in other solutions with any languages. However, if anybody's an expert when it comes to dealing with Webpack, I would love to, uh, to find a way to uh, leverage your expertise to optimize how this is bundled into the web part. Excellent. Thanks, Hugo. So what I'm going to do, what I've got off screen is a number of styles. Uh, we're not going to go into the details of the styles because those could be shared. But what I'm going to do is bring it over and paste it in. Now, what I've done is I've included the ability to create a very, a very simple ribbon around our names. Now, this is using a before and after attribute. Uh, you could do that with just an image. It's a little more complex. This allows it to be completely CSS styled, so it's going to be responsive. Uh, very simple. We're starting easy and slow here, but it's still a nice little experience. Let's take it a step further. Go ahead and remove that, and we'll go ahead and add 
a button. Now what's happening in this button is there's a hover effect and it's going to be like a metallic glimmer or shimmer. So as I hover over it, you can see it's almost like I'm kind of painting on the experience of orange or it's metallic being shifted in the light, right? So some hover effects, things that are only accessible through that pseudo attribute. Let's step it up a little bit. Now we're looking at a community uh, collection of community contributors through Polaroids. Now this, as we see it, uh, is simply just list formatting. You can achieve exactly what we're looking at here with pure list formatting, which is really, really cool, but we can still take it a little bit further. So we'll edit the page, we'll add the web part, we'll accept like Bo did, and we'll paste in a little bit of a change. And what's happened is you see now it kind of added a little bit of a random tilt to the Polaroid. So there's a little more randomness. Looks like they're laying on a table, uh, which I think provides a little better experience. Uh, and if I hover over it, now it brings to attention the individual person that I'm hovering over, right? It's great, but we can do better. Let's go ahead and edit our style, remove the default add another one. And now there's two things that have happened. We see that we've customized the font and the entire card or Polaroid has become black and white. And the reason it's become black and white is because now when you hover, we color filter and shift into color from the black and white. So a pretty cool effect. But wait, there's more. If we go ahead and add one more, we'll delete that. And you can always uh, go ahead and open the full screen editor right here too. So if we wanted to do that and paste it in, we could hit save. Now we see that it's done everything we've seen so far. It's tilted it, uh, it's turned it black and white, uh, changed the font, but you'll notice we added a little heart down here. So perhaps there's some sort of engagement service that we work with that works off of something like a hyperlink. We know we're not gonna override this with JavaScript, but perhaps a click event could be tied to some service for likes or favorites. And so if I hover over Bo here, and then I hover over the heart, you can see a little animation occurred. And that's all using CSS, CSS animations and sprites. So the power here is significant uh, when you talk about being able to utilize things like pseudo attributes and animations via CSS for HTML that we do technically own. So let's jump back to the presentation and Hugo's gonna talk through some of the sample code. Thank you, David. Uh, so, what you're looking at here is uh, an overview of what the solution looks like. It's broken down into kind of the controls, which includes the the editor and the web part. We're going to focus into the controls, uh, and uh, specifically, uh, what you see here is that we have kind of localization. We have the custom build uh, of the Monaco editor, which is a solution that Chris Kent uh, used before. And then we have uh, the Monaco editor, um, you know, editing uh, control and a property field control that allows you to embed the Monaco editor in, uh, in your property pane. The second part is the web part itself. And the web part obviously is made of the web part and the control that renders the web part. The web part itself has the uh, enhance uh, list formatting. And if we go into the web part itself, you'll see here how we call our uh, property field Monaco editor. Again, like I said, we built this so that we could use any language the Monaco editor. In this case, we're saying we're using the CSS uh, language uh, and we're using the Visual Studio Lite theme. We could use any theme or any language, including uh, custom language support. This is how we render uh, the, the control. So if you click on, on the inside of this code, you'll see the first thing that we do, and this is very cheesy, very simple, but we simply create a style element that we can embed and we actually put the custom CSS that, uh, that you enter. Uh, most modern browsers, actually all modern browsers, allow us to embed a style in the body of the page and it will render it properly. On some older browsers, uh, you have to include it in the header. Uh, when we designed this, we actually decided to not include anything in the header because we, were, we, we didn't want to break too many rules. So we included the style element in the body of the web part itself. All we do here is if we're in display mode, all we render is the style, but um, if we're not in display mode, 
you'll see that we the first thing we do is if we didn't accept the disclaimer we put our cheesy uh, disclaimer on the screen by the way if you don't want to have that disclaimer it was kind of intended as a joke but if you want don't want the disclaimer you can just change the manifest of the web part to say that you've already accepted the disclaimer and uh, the web part will not display the disclaimer the next part here is how we render our list formatting. And we just use the Office Fabric UI message bar to say, uh, you know, click here to add some cascading styles or, uh, you know, yay, you've already added some styles, click here to change them. And uh, that's it for code, I believe. So we have some, uh, some links that are available to you. Again, as David said, we have uh, created a PR for this web part in the, uh, the web part samples repository. Uh, there's some links here for the pseudo elements, pseudo classes and animations. All those are valid uh, things that you can use within, within the, uh, the, the web part. But I would encourage you, and you're gonna see this, this warning many times in, uh, in the readme and in the code, I would encourage you to uh, only leverage what's available out of the box with the, the list view formatting first. Uh, use everything you can uh, and only use this web part for things that are not supported. There's some styles that are not supported, like RGBA values are not supported, animations are not supported. That's when this web part should be used. And again, you should use it uh, with, uh, with great responsibility. That's it for me, David. Yep, that's it for me too. Appreciate the time, guys. Thank you for that one. Uh, awesome stuff.